Welcome back guys, it's the Tight Wad. I'm sitting in my 2008 Yamaha YDRE electric golf cart, also known as the G29, and I have some braking noise. So I'm gonna show you that now. Not only do I have braking noise, but I also have issues trying to engage the parking brake when on hills, the cart tends to roll. The brakes on this cart are an internal brake, meaning it's inside the transaxle. So you have to pull the whole thing off in order to replace them. It's a tedious process, but it is something that you can do. So today I'm gonna to show you step-by-step step how this service manual tells you to replace your brakes on this cart. I need to give a huge shout out to the guys over at Golf Cart Garage. They sent me the brake parts that I needed to complete this, but they also gave me something for you. So check the description for a discount code that you can use when shopping on their site for all your parts for your golf carts. Since this is a little bit longer video, I'm gonna use one of my previous videos to show you some tips to getting through it a little bit quicker. At the very bottom, you can see that there are what we call chapters. And if you hover over each of them, it will tell you what I'm doing in that particular section. So if you just want to know how to do one step, find the chapter that correlates with what you're doing. Another way to do a little bit faster option is to click on the settings gear and go to playback speed. I watch a lot of YouTube videos in 1.5 speed. So it speeds up the audio, but you can still understand it. And then it also speeds up what's going on on the video. Hope these help while you navigate through this video. The first thing we need to do to get started today is to remove the drain plug from the transaxle, which is right here. And it just takes a hex key or Allen wrench to remove that. Uh, I've already removed this fluid one time when I was replacing the bearing. So if you, one of your bearings goes out on your transaxle, I have a video showing how to fix that as well. So I've only got about 20 or 30 minutes of drive time on this since I removed it the last time, but you can see it's still pretty nasty. It should be pretty much clear. Once it stops dripping, I'm gonna put that plug back in while I remove the transaxle. Then we'll remove the remaining oil once we crack it open. Before we start disconnecting the wires on the motor, we need to remove the negative battery terminal. So there are lots of batteries in this cart, but the one on the extreme driver side has the negative terminal closest to the back of the cart and you see the thick black cable going back towards the electrical components so this is the one that we need to disconnect before we get started removing anything we're going to actually remove the wheels on the cart so we need to jack it up and i'm going to put a jack stand in this area here on each side in the back and then in the front right as it starts to bend to go towards the front and after the wheels are removed, we will put them under the cart as well. So if the jack stands do fail, the cart will fall onto the wheels and not onto the concrete. It's also an extra layer of protection if I'm working on the cart when something fails. Make sure you go ahead and take a picture of the orientation of the wires before you remove them. The ones on the thicker cables near the end of the motor here are 13 millimeters on my cart. I can't guarantee that all of this is stock but I am gonna to try to tell you sizes as I encounter each one. So each one has a lock washer and a nut. I'm going to be putting them off to the side and labeling them. The smaller two wires connected here are 10 millimeter nuts on mine. And it looks like I have green on this left side and black on the right side. Again, they have a little lock washer and a small nut. Next, we're going to remove this wire connector from the speed sensor. It has a little clip on the side here that you should be able to push in and wiggle apart. It's a little trick to get these apart. If you have any compressed air or an air compressor, you can blow it into the edges. Mine was having a hard time coming off, but I blew out some of that grime and now it is coming right apart. The next step is to remove the brake assembly. We're going to start by removing this clip. Next thing we need to do is remove this pin. There is going to be a little bit of tension on it, so be careful while you're removing it. I'm going to push forward on this whole mechanism a little bit and tap that pin out. We are gonna remove this relief hose. It's not supposed to be connected to anything. It just goes through that hole. And then we're gonna remove these three bolts right here. So this whole assembly will come off. We don't have to worry about the tension on the brake cable. These three bolts are 13 millimeter and I am using an extension just so I don't have to work in such a tight area. All right, all three bolts were the same length, so I'm not sure why that one was color-coded green. I'm just gonna let this brake assembly hang uh, down here out of the way. You'll notice there's a hydraulic jack underneath the transaxle to hold it up as I remove these next components. 
I'm gonna try to get away with only removing this side of the suspension arm here. I have a lift kit on it, so it's a little bit different than the uh, correct configuration. And I broke this loose with an air wrench because it was on super tight. Then I put a closed end wrench on the back side to hold it while I take off this bolt. I feel like it's loosened up enough now I can slide it out. So with this up out of the way, now I need to remove this, which is on the spring. I think it's welded on the back, so I should just be able to remove this front one. I don't have a ratcheting closed end wrench for metric, I only have it in standard. Might be something that I invest in before putting this back together, because this is gonna take a while. And it'll be nice to have for all the projects I'm gonna be doing on this golf cart. I need to do the same thing on the other side, removing the shock brace. This one's a little bit easier to get to because the suspension has a little more clearance on it over here. One other thing you need to do is cut the zip tie holding this wiring harness sleeve to the electric mode. I lowered the jack, which lowered the brackets away from the shocks. Now I need to remove four bolts on each side that hold the transaxle to the frame of the golf cart. These bolts are also 14 millimeters. To break these through, I have this extending breaker bar that I'm gonna put on there, which makes it a lot easier. It's not ratcheting, so it's just to get it started. So I'll get all of them started, and then I'll come back with the ratchet to remove all of them. Now we do the same thing on this side, removing the four bolts holding the transaxle on. All right, we got the transaxle and the motor out of the golf cart and brought it down to the basement. I did leave the motor attached just so I could get some better shots for you guys for how to remove this. There are three bolts that attach the electric motor to the transaxle and they are here, here, and here. So I'm going to get those removed, slide the motor off, and then we'll start working on the transaxle and getting it split apart. These bolts are 10 millimeters. I ended up buying some ratcheting closed end wrenches from Harbor Freight. Uh, these are actually really well made. Um, I like the gears feel nice and solid in them. All right, with those three removed, we should be able to remove the motor. And it is heavy, so be ready to take on some weight as you slide it off. I got to loosen up. I'm going to try to leave this vent hose intact because I know that it's been on here a while. There's a little squeeze clip here to remove it, but I don't want to risk cracking the hose. Next thing we need to do is remove this mounting plate. There are four bolts inside here. That's going to give us access to these two bolts that hold the transaxle together right there. Before I remove this piece, you'll see I took a marker and marked both pieces so I know how to line it up. And while I had my Sharpie, I went ahead and did the same on the transaxle so I can line everything up back up easily. These are 13 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and crack them all first. Once they're cracked, they come off really easily. Now this piece should slide off. And that makes it much easier to get to the rest of these bolts. Last night I propped everything up on two pieces of lumber to elevate it a little bit, put a little cup under it to catch any oil, and started removing all of these bolts around the perimeter. I still have two on the bottom and one on the top just to hold it together in case it decided to crack on me. But tonight I'm going to remove the last three bolts and try to crack this open. There should just be a gasket in between here that I should be able to pry apart. And then whenever I put it back together, I'm gonna to use a liquid gasket. I'll bring you in here, you can see it's already starting to come apart. So there's a good gap all the way around it. So I think I can just pull it apart. I don't think I'm gonna to have to pry anything. All right, and you can see this gasket piece is just coming off as I separate it. All right, I'm gonna get some close up for documentation purposes for myself and for you guys. So everything looks good here. Got some ball bearings in there. And then on this side, all the teeth look really good. Everything honestly looks pretty new. 
this is the shaft that the motor goes on to. That's the only thing that looks like it might be a little bit worn. Let me try to get it focused. All right, this top one is held in by friction, so you need to pry it out. I've got a long screwdriver here, and I'm gonna try not to put a lot of sideways pressure on it, and it pops out. I got some t-shirts out to put these things on, some clean old t-shirts, so it should continue to come out here. And that piece is out. Next one that should come off is this one. And that one just pulls right off. Wasn't expecting it to give like that. Be careful if yours is worn a little bit because these can, can be razor sharp and cut you. You may want to wear gloves when you're doing this. Mine are not super sharp. They're not worn down a lot. So this one should just pull off as well. Don't try to use a hex key to remove these. That's not necessary. But you will need to use a 3 16 hex key to remove these and from what i've seen from other people posting these are hard to get out uh, you can see the brake discs are right behind this i need to give a huge shout out to my friend luke this is the second time he's helped me on a project for my golf cart he is a mechanic and he is using an impact screwdriver so you put it into the screw and then you hit it with a hammer and it turns to the left each time you hit it and eventually loosens the bolt i'll make sure i include a link to these in my amazon storefront in the description for the video. So once you get to this point, make sure that you flip this transaxle upside down in a five gallon bucket with the side you see now facing up. This is gonna allow the plates and the ball bearings to stay in place as you remove the screws. I failed to do that, but you'll see it in the bucket in a couple more steps. So you end up with four longer bolts and then three shorter ones. So this brake plate comes off that holds everything together. And then inside here, you have a stack of all these pieces and they slide right out. So we'll look and see what all we have. The part that I'm holding now can be replaced by removing the bearing and the kit does come with the correct friction plate to replace this one with, but I didn't have a press available. So I'm just going to leave this one in place and replace all of the other plates instead. So the instructions manual tells you to put it on the stand that's made for this, but a five gallon bucket works really well too. So you can set it down in a five gallon bucket whenever you're taking everything apart. I didn't realize there were ball bearings in behind here. So I'm gonna lift this out to show you now. This piece lifts off and then below this, there are six little balls like would be in a ball bearing sitting in little pits right here on this. And as the brakes engage and disengage, it moves up and down these little things here. This spring, goes between this and the little flat piece here. So I'm gonna get that back in there. I'm gonna have to rotate it to do that. So it goes on that little hammer and then fits down in there. So that should, spring should hold everything in place while you reassemble the rest of it. All right, so now we need one of these friction plates in here. And then this is going to go on. So your springs are gonna go on this post and this one, so those don't have any of the plates on them. So I'm just gonna stack these in here, trying to line them up as we go, because we're gonna have to make everything fit. Once those are all stacked up, we're going to slide our springs in. And then this plate goes back in place. The beveled portion where those bolts go goes on the top. It's time to put the bolts back in. I'm going to use the new bolts because the old bolts had some uh, issues getting them out so some of them got a little marred up on the top and it goes long short long short long long and this one's short and I'm gonna go ahead and start with the ones that have the springs on them just to get those springs keep those springs from pushing up just gonna barely get them started and that should hold it down and now I can go down and start uh, screwing the other ones in. Now I'm going to get my ratchet and put them in a little bit more. Still not tightening anything down. As soon as I feel any tension, I'm moving on to the next one. All right, with these all loosely secured, you get your torque wrench and you go to 18 to 21 foot pounds on each one. 
and you want to tighten one bolt and then tighten the one across from it and then repeat that process till they're all done. All right, now this is very important. You need to line up the plates in here with that bottom one. Next, you're installing this carrier gear and these six posts are gonna slide down between each of these friction plates. So you need to make sure that they're all lined up. You're going to set this down carefully on top, trying to line it up with that top one. And then you have to wiggle it back and forth to get it to fall down into each of those plates. And it feels like it went all the way down pretty easily first try. Uh, there shouldn't be a big gap between here and the plate beneath it. I'm just gonna move it just a little bit to make sure, and that bottom one's a thicker plate, so you'll know if you got it all the way down or not. So this is in here. When you turn this, you should see these two gears spinning in opposite directions like this. With that in place, it's time for the intermediate shaft and gear assembly. It goes in and it should seat easily. And then the input shaft goes in here with the gear going up. This is a good stopping point to review and make sure everything's in place. Make sure that that spring did not come in unengaged. It should be on that hammer there and pressed against the flat spot there. Make sure you have your spring in on each side of your brake assembly. Make sure this is all the way down into all of the brake plates. So you should have moved it back and forth until it's seated. Um, this should be fully seated down there. You can see the bearing is flush with the casing and the same on this one. And then you can also turn this, which should cause everything to turn, including these two pieces here. And there should be nothing feeling like it's grinding. Everything should spin freely. Next step is to clean where the two pieces of the transaxle seal together. This is the gasket that I use to reseal the transaxle. What you're really looking for is the silicone RTV. So lots of different brands make it. I know that the book actually suggests that you use the Loctite brand, but any of the silicone RTV will work. After I've gone around each bolt hole, I'm gonna get, make a bead all the way around. All right, now you just set the top piece down over this. That center piece you'll feel engaged first. And then it is a little difficult to get this to go over this bearing. I put a little oil on it just to try to help the process. All right, the first four bolts you install go here, 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 and then back here next to the oil drain plug. And they are the longer of the bolts. So you took off several bolts from around this, but there are four that were longer than the others. We can go ahead and tighten those down and we'll torque them down as well. And now we'll put the other 10 bolts in and tighten them in a crisscross pattern. These bolts get tightened down to tw uh, 20 to 25 foot pounds. This plate is next, but I'm going to clean off all of this. All right, put some grease on the shaft here and on the other piece that's gonna slide down on it. Line up your marks. I have my little marker stripe here. It lines up with the marker stripe here. I'm gonna slide this down and let it seat in place. And then you have your four bolts that go in here. They're gonna also be tightened down to 20 to 25 foot pounds. Now with all this done, you should be able to spin this shaft easily. You'll see this is moving. If there's any binding, you're gonna to have to disassemble the whole thing and find out what's causing the issue. I figured while I have the motor out of the cart, I would also blow some of the carbon buildup out of it. So I'm going to remove these four bolts. They are 10 millimeter. Before I lift anything out, I'm actually going to draw a line so that I can line this back up right onto the sticker here. So I'm gonna lift this out. You can see everything looks pretty good in here, but I'm gonna take this out. The plates are really filthy. I'm gonna take this out and spray out this carbon buildup with an air compressor. And I'm gonna wear a respirator when I do that. All right, now that it's blown out, I'm going to reassemble. You can see the plates look pretty good in there. And I have my mark here. I'm going to line it back up with. 
All right, I'm gonna get the motor put back on now. I know that the label goes up. I'm going to get it onto the shaft here. And then we have the 10 millimeter bolts. All right, this one did not have a flat washer on it. The other two have a lock washer and a flat washer. Everything's done as much as I can today because I have to wait for the gasket to cure overnight. It'll take about 24 hours. And then I have to fill it with the Yamalube. I'm gonna do it while it's sitting here. So it's easier to get a funnel in. So I'm not working up under the cart and then we'll slide everything back in and get everything hooked back up. Now we need to add 44 ounces of Yamalube, this friction modified plus shaft drive oil. It's SAE 80W90. I found it at a local motorsport store that sells ATVs and other things like that. So we're gonna get that poured in. With that full, you can go ahead and reinstall the cap. Make sure you get it nice and tight. And then we can slide the whole transaxle back under the cart and start putting it into place. Get the transaxle with the motor up in this position, back down on the support, and then get your all eight bolts started and then get those tightened down. Tighten these four bolts that hold the transaxle to the frame to 36 to 50 foot pounds. And they are 14 millimeter bolts. Next up is to attach the shocks. All right, and the, these are the bolts you're gonna use for that. And the nut is welded onto the back of the bracket. So we're gonna move this around, get this in here. Try to get it lined up perfectly. And before I tighten it completely down, I'm going to do the one on the other side. And with that side locked in, I should be able to pivot this one a little bit easier to get everything lined up. So if you remember on this side, I couldn't get my regular socket in here. So that's why I went and bought these ratcheting closed in wrenches. And torque spec on these is 35 to 40 foot pounds. I don't think I can get my torque wrench on this side. So I'm just going to wing it because this piece is in the way. All right, last piece here with the suspension is to reattach this. And this is a 17 millimeter bolt and nut. And torque spec is 55 to 77 foot pounds here. To connect your wires, your green small one goes to F1. Your black thick one goes to A2. Your black skinny one goes to F2. And your white thick one goes to A1. Don't forget to reconnect this cable. It just snaps right back together. Don't forget to reattach your brake assembly. It has three bolts. I found it very useful to put everything in baggies when I was taking everything apart so I knew exactly which bolts went where. Now you just need to pull the brake lever back up and slide the pin in. The pin hole comes towards you. And the locking pin should be leaning towards the back from the front and this orientation. I'm excited to be at the point where I can put the wheels back on and then we can take this thing for a test drive. A couple of final steps you need to reattach your wires to this piece with a zip tie. Then we also need to take this relief hose and put it back into the parking brake assembly. Then the final step before we can test is reconnecting your negative battery terminal. Drove the cart around for a few minutes to make sure everything was well lubricated and now you can hear there is no brake noise when stopping. Now I'm testing the parking brake. You can see that when I engage the parking brake, I no longer roll down the hill backwards, so I don't have to worry about trying to find a curb to park it against. The family is super excited to have the golf cart back in commission and no annoying brake noise whenever we try to stop and also not having to chop the wheels whenever we want to park it on a hill. Special thanks to the guys over at Golf Cart Garage for sending me the parts for this repair today. Make sure you check my description for a discount code to get a discount on any purchases you make on their website. Check them out for all of your golf cart needs as well as side-by-side -side needs. Make sure you're following along. I have a playlist for all golf cart repairs. If there's something that's not on there that you wanna know how to fix, send me a message and I'll make a video. Hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. It'd be awesome if you'd click that logo in the bottom left-hand corner to subscribe to my channel and maybe even check out one of my other videos shown on the right. As always, I hope you guys have a great day.